The bench press is a real milestone lift. This is one that I think that at some point everybody should challenge themselves to at least attempt this exercise. It's certainly not easy, um, but it is one of those exercises that is extremely important in your progression in kettlebell training and it really ties in a lot of the movements and the strength that we have developed so far. So one thing that's extremely interesting and unique about this exercise is that it is a way that we are able to, as human beings, lift a tremendous amount of weight with one arm to the overhead position. Um, in fact, it's argued that this particular technique would allow somebody to lift more weight than any other technique and it is also a strict movement. In other words, there's no power phase movement involved, no jerking of the weight at all. It's a very strict, smooth, controlled movement. So for me, uh, to practice this, this is really a big part of the art form of the art of strength, okay? So the bent press will begin from the rack position, or at least we're gonna begin this lesson from the racked position and you guys don't have to clean the bell to the rack yet. You can just watch and observe and begin when you're ready. From the rack, the bent press, what you can remember is it's based off of the windmill primarily. Okay, so we're going to be moving our hips off to the side, squeezing the obliques as we move, just like we do in the, in the windmill, feeling the glutes, hamstrings, and inner thigh of the loaded side especially going through that long range of motion. So as a result of this windmill pattern that we're going to be using, we're going to take the rack and move it all the way off to the side the way that we're going to be moving away from, okay? So what I'm doing is I move the bell to the side of my rack. First of all, I'm beginning my windmill. It's just the very beginning of a windmill, popping out my hips, leaning my torso off to the side only enough to facilitate the neutralization of the weight. Okay, so I don't need to get any further over at this point. In fact, you certainly wouldn't want to. Okay, so just leaning enough to facilitate neutralizing the weight because if I'm standing all the way up, it feels like it's falling off to the side. So a little bit of a windmill. Tricep lat connected. That's the other thing that you should feel. Your lat, and even if you don't feel them tight quite yet, at least you feel them touching and resting on each other. Palm forward. Now as I continue the windmill, I've already got a knee bend and both knees will slightly bend and that will help to facilitate some of the, the glutes, get more activity in those strong muscles. The movement here, there is no press in a bent press. It's a misleading name. We're gonna move under the weight in a windmill to lock out. Once we're locked out under it, we're gonna come to standing. We're looking for that tricep lat connection the entire time. Moving under, locking out, come to standing. Okay, from here, pull to rack, and I'm just gonna switch hands, just because I've got a lot of time under tension, I like to stay even, just like you guys do. So, first thing I do, I'm gonna move the bell off to the side and I'm going to adopt a very small windmill stance and I say small because by the time I get to the full extent of my windmill you'll see how deep of a range of motion I'm actually going to go through in this windmill. <sighs> Slight bend in the knees. Now really at this point you're completely stable through your feet, your legs and your hips and the bell and your elbow is resting on your pelvis. Okay, so at this point, there's no time to be looking for better footing or better ground, okay? That would happen here if you would need to or before you pick the bell up. But if you pick the bell up and you don't feel stable, you need to adjust, do it here. Now you're in your partial windmill. Now, before you move any deeper in this windmill, the first thing that you have to do is get the bell off of the shoulder. If you start to windmill and the bell is resting on your shoulder, you'll never come out of this position. You'll never get it off your body, okay? So you're 
hand needs to stay over your elbow, your elbows on your pelvis, and your, that straight down the kinetic chain of your body, okay? So as you move, watch me move from here, the bell immediately comes off the shoulder. Otherwise, I'm going to be fighting through my tricep to extend that tricep to press the bell. That's not going to work. You're, you're now just stabilizing it. You're moving under the bell. You lock out. And then you come to standing. Tricep lat connection. Rest the elbow on the pelvis. Bending the knees, that's going to facilitate greater range of motion. If you stay straight leg, you're not going to get as deep in this windmill. You're also getting stronger muscles. Your glutes much more involved. In fact, you're getting them involved in the first place this way. So there you go. Bending the knees, flat feet, resting the bell, contracted in the oblique. Then you get the bell off the shoulder. Resting the tricep on the lat. The lat flexes deeply as you move under it. The lat here is stabilizing the shoulder, which in, in this case is now stabilizing the bell. And you make sure that bell is stable before you come up out of that bent press, okay? And just like with a windmill, you make sure that when you're down in this position, if that bell doesn't feel complete, if it feels slightly off in any direction, you neutralize it, you get it stable before you attempt to lift it with your legs, okay? Because that moment, there's a lot of increased tension that you may not realize until you go to move. And if that bell is off, it can come crashing down if you're not stable. Breath, you don't want to do this as a high heart rate exercise, so you should be able to control your breathing. Breath in, move under, Exhale, pull to rack. Breathe again, breathe again and again if you need to. Just like that. That's the breath that you're looking for with this exercise. It requires a ton of flexibility to be able to get deep enough in this windmill without pressing the bell towards the end. One thing that you can do is video yourself and see if the bell is moving upwards as you're moving underneath it. The bell should be staying completely in the same spot from the position that's in the rack until you get locked out. There might be some sideways movement in the direction that your body is going, but it won't be moving upwards, okay, because there's no press. You're moving under the weight. If you struggle with this range of motion, and you're getting down in this bent press, and that's where you get to, and the only option you think you have is to press the bell. Instead of pressing the bell, continue to move under it, this time instead of with a bend, with a squat, and up. So let me switch hands, show it to you again. So if you're moving under it, and you get locked out in the windmill, drop under, then come up. This way you're still moving under the weight and you're still going to progress the exercise in the way that you want to progress it. Continue to work also on your windmills and other such things until this becomes easier for you. There's also lunge stance bent presses that can help just to help you kind of get this movement down. Don't skip over this one, you guys. Have fun with it, practice it, master this exercise. To me, this is what kettlebell training is all about, the bent press. <laughs>